Hey there, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you some really cool, fun, and time-saving things that you can do with Canva Pro. Now, some of these things may be a part of the Canva free, but the majority of this is only gonna be available to those on the Canva Pro version. Um, so if you already have Canva Pro and you're like, I did not know that you could do that, then now you're gonna be mind blown, right? But if you're on the free version and been kind of on the fence about whether to go ahead and upgrade, um, this might kind of sway your decision. All right, so just an overview of some of the things we're gonna talk about. So copy to another template, also known as merging two different uh, uh, designs or elements that you have open two different templates into a single document. Using folders to better organize all of your projects, using the storage um, folders to actually store all of your elements. Text effects, that's a new one. Color matching, so when you add like clip art or a background picture or something and you wanna have the text kind of match the colors in the picture. Um, downloading PNGs with a transparent background. Resizing images and then sharing a template with other people without them messing up your original version. Okay, so copy two. So, all right, so let's say you have purchased some templates or like mock-ups and you wanna add them into a new design that you're creating, or maybe you have several different things open, right? And you're like, oh, I really wish I had incorporated that into this. Now I gotta build it from scratch into this one. No, you don't, you can simply copy it and then put it into your current one. So let's say I'm making a Pinterest pin and I wanna show a picture of these coloring pages to promote this coloring book, right? So I could save this to my computer and then upload it back into Canva and then add it to my Pinterest design. Or I can simply do this. Highlight it, copy it, hop over to my Pinterest pin or whatever. I mean, it could be a full on eight and a half by 11, whatever it is you're creating. And now I can just paste it in there, right? And then you can, of course, scale it, move it around, do whatever you wanna do with it. Um, this is especially helpful when you're creating coloring pages that you can copy from an older one, a graphic that you had and copy it in, or elements for like a journal page or a Bible study template, things like that. So like for me, I have my blog planning toolkit, but those are multiple different templates. Each one has different elements in it. And so as I created the newer ones, I didn't have to recreate it from scratch. I could just copy the page that I wanted, paste it in, and then make the edits for the text and everything else. So this is a very, very, time-saving and helpful uh, feature of Canva Pro. All right, next we are gonna talk about folders. So let me close this here. Okay, so over here you have folders. So if you're like me, I've been doing this for a couple of years, so I have just a hot mess of stuff, right? And it just busies up and sometimes I want something older that I made and I can't find it, I gotta scroll through. So now I have folders, that kind of better organize the, you know, many things of the same thing, right? So I have my blogging templates. These are all um, my templates for things I use in my courses, right? I like to be consistent. So they're always the same, just with the different words. The branding is the same. Um, I also have my blog planning toolkit, um, all of the ones for that. So anything related to blogging is in there. All of my coloring pages that I've created, um, my reading plans, elements, and so forth. So using folders to better organize all of your stuff will save you so much time. It will also prevent you from duplicating something. Like I already created it once, I gotta create it again because I can't find it in the feed, right? Folders are super, super helpful. All right, next, element storage. This is my favorite. Um, so as you begin, like downloading your own graphics and elements. So you go to design bundles, you go to font bundles, or not font bundles, but design bundles, creative market, and you download bundles of different elements. Um, then you have them all saved on your computer and every time you wanna use it, you've gotta come in here and upload whatever it is, right? So these are some florals. Um, these are some flourishes that I created. Well, if they're black and white, sometimes it's really hard to see what they are. Now I have, so there's some of these, right? 
I have these pretty ones of the women's faces here. And I'm gonna open this up right here. So let's say, so I just finished a coloring book that I made with some of these. Now, you know, a couple of months later, I wanna make some more, right? I gotta go back into my computer, upload them back into Canva, or scroll through this endless feed of everything I've added since then. That could be kind of a pain, right? So now I could just come over here. So this is like my blank template, right? And let's say I just want to use this girl. So I'll just copy her and paste her into the new document. Now this is especially helpful for all these florals, right? So if you bought different floral bundle elements, you can create a document as I've done here, right? So these are all my flourishes with the hearts. That's from a particular bundle. These are the women. I'm in the process of creating the ones for all my floral elements. Um, so I put all of these on a page and then save it. Now, when you do save it, be sure that you give it the name, a name so that you know what it is, right? Um, and so what I've done is I'm doing, I'm actually in the process of this now, every bundle of flowers that I've purchased, and I've, I've got a lot of them, um, each bundle pack will go in its own template here. And then I'll give it the name of like purple flowers or blue flowers or whatever it is, right? This is gonna be so helpful for you to have everything right here in Canva without having to continually upload them from your computer, right? Okay, hack number, where are we at? Element storage, so text effects. All right, so let me close some of these things here. So this is a super fun one. Um, you may have noticed this already and weren't quite sure how to use it. So it just says effects, right? Some of you may not have this yet, um, they've been kind of slow in rolling it out. If you don't have it and you're on Canva Pro, just send them an email and say, hey, where's my button, right? Um, I had been Canva Pro for about three years now, three or four years, and I still didn't have the button. And so I just emailed them and like right away they fixed it. All right, so my favorite thing about this is for coloring pages, but you can use it for whatever purpose. Um, so let's go in here. So. I'm just using this a wrappy font. You can use any font you want, but just to show you the different things that it can do. Hollow, splice, and echo. So my favorite is the hollow. Now with this, you can see it's a little blocky, dark, right? You can adjust the thickness to make it a little lighter and more appropriate for coloring pages, right? You don't want them like super bold because then it stands out too much. For me, this has been a game changer because you can do this with any font. And one of the things that I always had problems finding was good hollow fonts in cursive or handwriting. I do Bible coloring pages, Bible verses, and then the pretty coloring page around it. Um, and I always wanted to create some words within my little word thing that were cursive or handwriting or fancy. I like to call it fancy fonts, right? And even though Font Bundles has a lot of different fonts you could buy, finding hollow ones for handwriting was kind of hard, right? Problem solved, you can do this with any of your fancy fonts, right? I'm just gonna make it a little bigger here so you can see it on the screen. Um, take this down here. So just to kind of show you some different, like this was one. That one's kind of cute, right? I have a love shade in here. It's got little hearts in it. So now I've added some pretty cool coloring elements that I didn't have to put much effort into, right? Like it just, I just made it that way. Super, super cool. Okay, splice, just different things. Again, with each of these ones, you can adjust your thickness and different things, right? Um, for those of you doing coloring pages for kids or maybe letter elements, um, let's see, Spartan, League Spartan, that one makes a great one, um, as a hollow, again, I would lessen the, a little bit, um, so anyway, this, again, for me, was a huge game changer, so now, for my future coloring pages, I can make um, some really cool font elements. Um, if you do Bible journaling templates for margins and you wanna add the creative little different things with your text, 
problem solved right here. All right, next hack, color match. This one is, okay, let me hop over here. So when you create different things um, with different colors and then you wanna add text, you'd like to have your text color maybe match the color of the things in your image, right? Or your picture. So, so I was making these really cool um, screen savers. These are phone screen savers, right? And while I had some black, um, I'm gonna put some words here in. right? And then I wanted to put a fancy word, but I want that word to kind of match, right? So check this out. You get these photo colors. So it takes elements from your picture and pulls some of the, the main colors from it, right? So you get the exact shade of whatever's inside your picture. This was so cool. I was making these um, screensavers a few months back and I was making all kinds of different ones. And I just happened to come upon this feature, right? I clicked over and I was like, I need to find a really good dark red. And I was like, oh my gosh, there it is, right? So I could go that one, I could go a little darker, whatever. Mind blown, right? Okay, next hack, transparent PNG. So what is that? So let's come back over here to all of my designs. So let's say you have a single image that you would like to um, save and use into another image, but when you save it the regular way, it keeps whatever the background is. If it's white, then it's a square or whatever, right? It's white. So when you add it to something else, that white comes with it, right? And you don't want that. So I am going to show you what I mean here. So now, I'm just gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna make this a dark background so you can see. So let's, again, you already know about the copy and paste, but this is for other things that you might need this function for. So now I'm going to, this is the one I just saved, right? See, it brings the white with it or whatever the color of the background is, and we don't want that. So when you save it with the, as a PNG, transparent background. And then when you save it, the only thing that's gonna save is this. And I think I might have already saved one here. Well, here's one here, right? Um, whoops, wrong one. So this is one I saved as a, parent, a transparent PNG, and now when it uploads, you see the white is all gone from around the back of it, okay? So anyway, transparent PNG is super helpful if you're creating all sorts of little designs and you want to add them into whatever thing you're creating. The biggest uh, use of this I have found is with these mock-ups um, that you can use for your opt-ins to display your different things to make people see like, hey, this is really cool, right? Okay, next, resizing images. So I actually resized this entire thing, this whole template, into another template. And it is actually right here, right? Uh, well, it's not all of them. Um, so here's the different ones I had. So I, from here, whatever you've created. Now, where would this be helpful? If you create something small or you create it in a square, and then you want to use that same layout in a Pinterest pin or maybe an Instagram graphic and then tweak it a bit. Um, this way you don't have to create it from scratch every time or make a new template every time. All you have to do is come over here and click that resize button and then resize it to whatever you want, right? You can resize it to a certain thing. So you'll have like Pinterest pin, you'll have, or if you want to make it smaller, maybe you want to scale it down, right? So you just do that and then it'll come up as a brand new feed in, in your um, template in your feed. And then of course you'll have to space it out because it'll be condensed the way it was and now your background is bigger. So Last thing is sharing as a template. Now, I really love this because I create templates for people. Um, I create templates uh, for my membership. Some of you may be um, create things that you will sell, but templates are a big thing because 
a lot of people don't know how to put stuff together and they'd like kind of done for you. Anyone who's ever um, purchased Pinterest templates from like CareFit or someone like that, this is how she's able to give it to you. Now in the past, you've been able to share something from Canva. You just hit the share button, right? I'm gonna use this one here. And you could share it where they would edit it or if you just shared it as a picture or whatever. So if you shared it for them to edit, because that's kind of the point when you're sharing templates, you want them to be able to use this to use their own images in, right? But when you shared it with them, they needed to make a copy and then make their edits in the copy. And what happened was a lot of times people wouldn't do that. So when you would go in to start editing it for your own use, their stuff would be in there, right? So um, this new feature makes it super easy to share. So like I could share this whole thing with you to where you can use these mock-ups. Um, you come here and you change this right here to share a link to use as a template. Then when they, when they open that, it'll save it to their profile. It has no connection to your original file. They can do whatever they want to with it. They don't have to make copies or anything. You're still, uh, your file stays intact um, and their file stays intact with them, right? So this was a super cool, handy new thing. Um, I actually, I just came upon this this week when I was looking through here. So, um, okay, so to recap, let me close these other windows. So we've got copy to another template or merge documents um, using folders, storing all of your elements in documents in folders, making cool things with text effects, perfect for um, coloring pages um, to be able to use all of your fonts as a coloring font, color match so that your text matches the color of whatever your background image is, downloading transparent PNGs, resizing images and sharing a template with someone else so that they can also use it without impacting your original one. All right, so if I come across any additional ones or if they release anything new, then I'll kind of add that to the list, maybe release another video. Um, but anyway, I hope this was super helpful for some of you who were still trying to figure out how to use Canva in a really creative way. Um, now you have it. All right, guys, I will talk to you in the next lesson.